Welcome to the first lecture of organizational psychology. One of the topics we are going to learn about this week is organizational behavior, the basics of this field of study. By the end of this week, you should be able to do these four things. Define OB, identify the major scientific disciplines that contribute to OB, demonstrate the importance of interpersonal skills in a variety of jobs, and identify the challenges and opportunities that managers face when applying OB concepts in real life. Organizational behavior is a field of study, like psychology, sociology, or business. This particular field of study looks at individuals, groups, structure within organizations. Its focus is on the behaviors and processes, procedures, dynamics, interactions within organizations. And so what do we mean by organization? Here, we're not using it as a verb. It's a noun in this class. An organization is a coordinated social unit, a system, a large group that is composed of two or more people, usually a lot more than two or more, that functions on a regular continuous basis to fulfill a shared goal. The easiest way to think about an organization is to think of a company or a business, but we might also consider schools, nonprofit organizations. OB studies three determinants of behavior in organizations, individuals, groups, and structure. OB applies the knowledge gained about these entities in order to make organizations operate more effectively. And this could mean a number of things, everything from profits to productivity, to satisfaction, to customers and stakeholders satisfaction. OB is primarily concerned with what people do in organizations and then how their behaviors affect the people around them and the overall business organization. Over time, OB professionals have honed in or fine-tuned what it is that they do, but there is still a considerable amount of overlap between what professionals in OB do and what IO psychologists do, what management and business consultants do. All of these professionals usually study or practice or deal with similar topics, things like motivation, leadership, power and influence, communication, group dynamics, training and development, change, conflict, and work design. Each field approaches these topics from a slightly different angle because each field has slightly different values. OB is an applied behavioral science. It is built upon the contributions from several other disciplines. The predominant areas are psychology, social psychology, sociology, and anthropology. The image on the slide provides an overview of the major contributions from each of these disciplines. Let's begin with psychology, the field that many of you are probably more familiar with. Psychology is the science that seeks to measure, explain, and sometimes change the behavior of humans. The earliest IO psychologists focused on problems with fatigue, boredom, 
and other factors that are relevant to performance and productivity. More recently, these professionals have started to study things like learning, perception, personality, emotions, training, leadership effectiveness, needs and motivation, job satisfaction, decision-making processes, performance appraisals, attitude measurement, employee selection techniques, work design, and job stress. Social psychology blends the concepts of psychology and sociology. It focuses more on the individual's behavior in social situations. How do other people influence the individual's attitudes, behaviors, and emotions in the workplace? Sociologists study the social system in which individuals exist. Sociology and social psychology are similar in that they are studying social situations, but a social psychologist will focus more on the impact on the individual, where a sociologist will focus more on the entire system, the entire group, as opposed to looking at how the individual contributes or is affected by that system. The greatest contribution of sociologists is probably their study of groups and group dynamics in complex organizations like businesses. Anthropology is the study of societies with the goal of trying to understand the people, their culture, and how they live. Anthropologists have contributed to OB through their study of cultural differences, things like differences in values, attitudes, and behaviors among people from different parts of the world and from different organizations. As you can see from this figure, organizational behavior is a melting pot of science. Each one of us is a student of behavior. We often try to read other people and make sense of their actions. Unfortunately, we often make mistakes in how we perceive our environment and the attributions that we make. We can improve our accuracy by replacing our gut feelings, our intuition with a more systematic, objective approach. The systematic approach that we often use in OB is something we call evidence-based management. What do we mean when we say systematic study of behavior? Basically what this means is that when we study behavior or when we make decisions in the work environment, we rely on a standardized, controllable approach. We can make much better predictions about how people will behave if we understand not only that person, but the situation in which they work. A systematic approach allows us to be more confident in the decisions that we make. The evidence allows us to see the details and the bigger picture in any given situation. Instead of making decisions based on the information that is available to us, we actively seek out additional information so that we can make a better, more well-informed decision. If we make all decisions with intuition or our gut feelings, we're likely working with incomplete information. We probably don't have all of the data that we need to make the best decision. Relying on intuition is generally not a good idea. We can listen to what our gut is telling us, what our intuition is telling us, and use it as a starting place. 
but we always need to collect more objective information from the environment.